It's another Football Friday in Oklahoma. Right here in Oklahoma City, I'm Mike Sherman from the News OK Studios. And this is the News OK Sports Football Friday Hangout. Joining me, as always, are my esteemed guests on the big board for the first time, columnist Barry Trammell from her apartment or a home in Crestwood, Oklahoma City, Jenny Carlson, our OU beat writer Jason Kersey from his apartment in Norman, and from her luxury apartment in Stillwater, Oklahoma, Gina Mizell. Why do you always say that? You've never even been here. <laughs> I hear it's really nice. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy it. We'll, yeah. I hear it's great. He's and I look forward to visiting it sometimes. Always. But, <laughs> but first, before we get to that, let's get to the OU Notre Dame game. Guys, it's been written about, talked about, and on sun, Saturday night at 7 o'clock, they're finally going to get around to playing it. But I want to start off today with asking you this. We've written so many stories about the off-the-field uh, connections of this game that really, in a lot of ways, illustrate the deep, uh, heritage of these programs and their connections. So I would like to start off by asking you first, Barry, what's been your favorite uh, OU Notre Dame sort of connection that's been unearthed or fallen out of the sky this week as we've been writing on OU Notre Dame? Well, there's a couple that stand out to me. Um, I liked, uh, I liked uh, Jenny's story on the uh, father down in Lawton, Joe Ross, who uh, was the uh, yeah, helped serve mass as a 12-year-old in Chickasha in 1957, and then ended up going to Notre Dame, and now is, uh, you know, still a pastor here at the at the Lawton Church. So uh, I, that kind of connection, people who had some sort of, you know, connection with the Irish when they were here 55 years ago, and I also, uh, you know, I had no idea that that Don Bushy, um, that uh, that uh, Bob Stoops. Uh, high school coach went to Notre Dame um, until he, he and Mike dropped that nugget on me this week and um, that's fairly remarkable so just things like that there's uh, you know there's tons and tons of, of Notre Dame connections the, the deal is Notre Dame's a national school and everywhere it goes to play football it leaves an impact and you know it left impact here in Oklahoma. Jenny you've written a lot of these stories what, what's been your favorite, and what, what do you think we've learned from it? Well, I mean, I think it uh, reminds us that this, uh, this rivalry has a lot of roots in a lot of different places, and um, I agree with Barry. I thought that the Joe Ross uh, story was, was really, um, I mean, it was crazy how, uh, how, how that connection happened, and we actually unearthed that story from uh, a reader, friend of the program, uh, Dennis Richard, who's a local attorney, and um, Sherm uh, goes to, to your church and let us know about Father Ross and the connection that was there. But, um, you know, to me, it, it, it's another reminder, too, that Notre Dame has an appeal that is really national. I mean, here we are in a place where Oklahoma football is so big and such a big part of our sports uh, scene, but yet we've got a lot of Notre Dame fans that are right here amongst uh, amongst us. So I think that's that's what it sort of reminded me of is that, you know, don't be surprised if, you know, Newt Rockney's great grandson is cheering on the sidelines for the Sooners. I mean, just crazy stories like that that have been really fun to, to see as they've uh, come out of the woodwork this week. Uh, Jason, uh, a lot of this stuff is sort of, you know, this is the stuff of your father and your grandfather's time, but is, what, what, what have you found ed educated about or what surprised you or interested you about these stories? Well, I, I'm interested in all in all the history stuff and, and you know, finding out, like Barry said, you know, that Bob Stoops, uh, high school coach, was a Notre Dame quarterback is, is really interesting to me. Uh, Barry's story about the play like a champion sign and the debate over uh, who uh, who had the original um, is is really interesting. That the the connections between these two schools, um, they haven't played all that many times, but there are these connections because they're both such historical powers and then finding out you know that yeah that Newt Rotney's uh, you know heritage is, was an OU cheerleader that's that's fascinating to me uh, that there are these connections so um, I, I really enjoyed all the off the field stuff I, I think it's been uh, a lot of fun to, to, to read about Gina I knew about. I was gonna hire you 
when I asked you in the interview, what was your favorite place to be? And you said Sun Devil Stadium. So mm -hmm. I knew we had somebody on our hands that loved and appreciated college football and would do a great job covering it. But you've, you've kind of, for this part of the beat, you've kind of had a spectator standpoint on it. What are your observations this week just uh, about OU, Notre Dame, and sort of all the, all the stuff that's sort of been unearthed or fallen out of the sky about the game? Yeah, I mean, just all the, you know, connections, like everybody has said, just, yeah, people that you would think would be Notre Dame fans, but are OU cheerleaders because of the heritage there. Or just, you know, it seemed like every day, Barry was posting a blog that someone had emailed him with their own, you know, uh, unique story about the rivalry or something they remembered or their connection to OU and Notre Dame or, or what have you. And so that's been just really fascinating. Um, obviously, this is a huge, uh, huge football game, and, and that's ultimately what's going to be played tomorrow. But, um, you know, just just the connections, it's crazy. Just And like, like everyone said, I mean, Notre Dame's, um, I don't want to say power, but Notre Dame's reach goes from, from coast to coast, from, you know, e everywhere in this country, either you love them or you hate them. And just to kind of see those stories and to kind of localize them um, with OU and then you – you know, tack on the, the winning streak and Notre Dame breaking it and all of that. Um, it kind of creates just such a great um, narrative and, and just story after story after story. So it's it's been really fun for, for me to uh, to just kind of read it and to kind of just see what everyone else has come up with. And, uh, you know, our paper today with the special uh, rap, uh, Notre Dame OU rap is, is pretty special. So um, I've, it's been really fun for, for me to, to read all of that stuff. Barry, you've covered uh, OU football, you know, or been around it most of your life. Uh, this week, Bob Stoops said this was the biggest game since uh, 2000 Nebraska. Uh, do you agree, or do you think it's even bigger than that? Well, I, I think you you got to determine what you mean by big. Um, I think that's – it's not bigger than OU Nebraska 2000. Or it's not even bigger than 08 Texas Tech, because that was near the end of the season, and they were ranked two and four, two and whatever it was. Uh, that was a virtual national semifinal. But in terms of anticipation, electricity, um, atmosphere, then I think it, it's, it's got a chance to supersede those because it's Notre Dame. Uh, the truth of the matter is, um, I'm looking at the lineup here. I'm the only one on this, on this uh, panel that was alive uh, the last time Notre Dame came to, to OU and I it came to Owen Field and I was five years old. So um, it, it's going to be a very special night just because it's Notre Dame, the history, and the fact now that the Irish have done us the uh, incredible favor of getting good and making this a nationally relevant game. Jenny, how good are the Irish? Well, I think that's an interesting question. I mean, they've obviously won every game they've played so far this year. But, you know, I think you look at the teams they've played, and it's not – there's not a Big 12-style team on their schedule. They haven't beaten an offense like Oklahoma. They haven't faced that type of air raid pressure yet this year. So I think they're really good, but I don't know that I don't know how they're going to fare against a team like this. We don't have evidence of, uh, of how they're going to do. And obviously they're going to try to shorten the game, going to try to uh, run the ball and really take the air out of it. But Oklahoma, if they take care of the ball – and move it like we know they can, even against a really good defense, I think they win this game. I think Notre Dame is a really good team. I'm just not sure that we know exactly how they're going to stack up against uh, against this type of offense. Uh, guys, I was going to ask, and I'm going to ask, what it is about this game that you're most looking forward to or you're most curious about. But before I get to that, I want to get to something I'm a little curious about. I read Jason Kersey's head-to-head -head matchups. This is our uh, rap section, as Gina referred to it. On the back, there's a great head-to-head -head, uh, look at this game coming up. And, I, and, and in it, Jason Kersey took the game apart, went position by position, included special teams and coaching, and really gave an advantage into each area. Jason, I found myself a little surprised how many advantages you gave to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Well, to be honest with you, when I was uh, going through and, and doing that, uh, I, I kind of found uh, myself a little surprised. But you know, they're they're running backs. Uh, they've got three running backs that have played well. They've got uh, 
uh, an offensive line that you know it's it's hard to to you know the OU offensive line has played so well, especially considering what they what they lost early in the year, um, and they're really coming together nicely. But Notre Dame's offensive line is much more experienced and much deeper. Um, and then on the defensive side, I mean, I think there's no question that Notre Dame's defensive line and linebackers uh, have the edge. Although that doesn't mean OU's are, uh, have played bad, but uh, but Notre Dame's are just so good up front. Um, but but yeah, on on the whole, though, I still uh, think OU is the is the more complete team, and they're playing well in every phase of the game, particularly on special teams. I mean. Uh, Notre Dame's special teams, especially their return game, has been has been pretty atrocious this year. So, uh, so I think things like that really give OU the overall edge. The forecast for Norman is going to be cold on Saturday night, and Barry, that seems to be uh, I don't know how conducive that is to throwing the ball all around uh, the field and playing wide open, uh, running uh, running footloose and fancy free. But what what are you uh, curious about? in this game what is it about it that you hope will be revealed uh, or surprising or what are you anxious about to learn on saturday night uh, can ou protect landry jones um, can the sooners run the ball i think uh, i think the ou offensive line jk mckay is right they are playing a lot better than maybe we thought but this is going to be a stiff test can they can they produce against Notre Dame? OU wants to run the ball and then pick its spots to throw uh, throw deep, and can they protect Landry when it happens? I think we know what's going to happen when Notre Dame has the ball. They're going to run three or four plays and punt. So um, it's when OU has the ball that we really don't know much about. So um, that's that's what I'm most interested in. Gina, the uh, you'll be – in Stillwater for the TCU OSU game, and we'll get to that here in a few minutes. But I want to go back for a second. Barry said the the real question is, can OU protect Landry Jones? Um, the last time you were covering a game that Landry Jones was playing in, the answer to that was no. No. Um, do you? Uh, how did the Cowboys did it, do that? How did they get after him that night? They blitzed like crazy. I mean, they had two weeks to to dial up that game plan, and, and they just brought pressure from the linebackers. Um, they got great pressure off the edge uh, from Rashetti Jones, and, um, who who caused a fumble and scored a touchdown. And you know, Jamie Blatnick obviously uh, scooped up that ball when when Alex Elkins got to got to Landry and picked it up and rumbled down the sideline and and almost scored. So um, they they were just really really aggressive and just tried to. Uh, to go after Landry Jones, and obviously it worked, and, and I mean, really it worked to perfection as far as just the game plan to blitz and blitz and blitz. So, um, you know, obviously Notre Dame's got a good defense and um, has what some people believe is a Heisman candidate in, in Monte Teo. Um, but it, it, so I think that is the, the, the biggest key in this game for Oklahoma is, is can this offensive line that, you know, was so banged up at the start of the season, but has has uh, come on and performed better than, like uh, you said, Barry, maybe than people thought. Um, I think that'll definitely be the matchup to watch to see if uh, they can get to Landry and force him to make bad decisions or, or force a turnover or two and, and uh, see if they can slow this offense down. Jason, contrast that a little bit, the, what Gina described about how OSU came after Landry Jones with how Kansas State came after him. And talk a little bit about what you wrote today. I mean, you, your story was how Kansas State could have given, a blue, given everybody else, including Notre Dame, a blueprint on how to attack Landry Jones. Contrast those two games and talk about what you think you'll, we'll see from uh, the defensive side attacking OU tomorrow or Saturday. Yeah. 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 Kansas State's defensive front uh, came at Landry Jones, uh, you know, really hard and, and forced him into some mistakes. Obviously, the, the big one being his fumble into the end zone that they recovered for a touchdown. Um, I think that he's, I think he's uh, obviously playing a whole lot better today than he was uh, against Kansas State um, but the question is is you know how do how does anybody really know that the you know Texas Tech's defense looks like it you know it, it might it might be okay uh, Texas's defense is terrible Kansas's defense isn't any good um, so we don't he hasn't seen anything like this since that Kansas State game so this is the biggest test for him and for that offensive line since the Kansas State game and so um, 
it'll be really interesting to see uh, how well they're they're able to hold those hold those guys off. Jenny, on that night in Norman, when Kansas State came to town, you had the unique assignment of spending it with Mrs. Landry Jones. Uh, that wasn't sort of what we thought it was going to be. And uh, you, you turn in a very interesting story about if you think it was hard for you to watch, just imagine what it would have been like to be her. Some of those moments you were following her up and down, um, you know, the corridors of the, uh, the stadium and may not have been as honed on Landry that night as maybe uh, you would have been if you'd been covered in a different way. But let me ask you this. Is this, is this Landry Jones's chance to bury a lot of the criticism of him once and for all. Is this the best defensive challenge he's faced as an OU quarterback? And does the spotlight and the stage and everything else give him a chance to check that off and move on? Well, I think it can definitely help him in that way and uh, silence some critics. Clearly, if he plays well, I think that's going to go a long way to the outcome of this game. I believe, I believe from the start that for Notre Dame to win this game, they need defensive points. They need um, either touchdown or touchdowns or short fields that their offense, if they don't score, can kick field goals. I think that is going to have to happen if Notre Dame wants to win on Saturday. And a lot of that's going to come down to is Landry Jones giving them the ball or not. Now, obviously, other guys could fumble and those sorts of things, but a lot of that comes down to, you know, does Landry throw interceptions? Does Landry fumble the ball? Um, so I think if he doesn't, I think it goes a long ways towards Oklahoma winning this game. And clearly, he's got a chance uh, with Notre Dame secondary not having faced a test quite like this to really uh, make an impact with his arm. Uh, I think that big playability we saw last week, if uh, he can hit Kenny Stills or Jalen Saunders or um, some of these other guys for big plays, that'll be huge. And, you know, I think it could happen. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it'll go a ways towards um, making people, uh, OU fans, feel somewhat different about him. But ultimately, uh, it's about championships, you know, and, and a national championship. He's going to have played uh, all these years, and if he doesn't get a national championship, I think that's going to leave some people to say, you know, was he, how, you know, how great a quarterback was he? So, you know, obviously it's not all what Landry Jones says. The Sooners need help in a lot of ways to get back in that national championship picture. But uh, this is a step, in my mind, to, uh, to, to Landry Jones' legacy. I don't think it ends everything, but it's a step towards maybe helping that. Jenny, uh, while we're uh, hanging out here talking OU Notre Dame, you're also uh, monitoring and answering questions on the Power Lunch Good. live chat. I just wanted to ask you, what are, what's, what, what, what are people curious about the OU Notre Dame? What kind of questions are you getting from that? You know, I think a lot of people are just wondering where the uh, where the, the points of uh, least resistance are against Notre Dame. Uh, obviously, as Jason said earlier, Irish really good on the line, uh, on the lines, both sides of the ball. You know, what does that mean for Oklahoma? And, uh, you know, where where can the difference be in this game? Questions about Landry Jones. Uh, and I, I, I do think that people are curious how he will play in this game. So, yeah, I, I, those are sort of the, the tenor of the questions. Where does Oklahoma swing this game potentially? And how does Landry Jones play into this whole thing for Oklahoma? Okay, guys, we're going to uh, wrap up our Notre Dame uh, OU segment with a couple questions about atmosphere. And the first one leads to atmosphere, and that is, the best fight song in college football, reportedly, is coming to town uh, and in Notre Dame. Barry, what's your favorite? What's the best one that you what, – what do you love? We lost Barry. Jason, what's your best fight song? Barry will be back in a second. Oh, that, that's tough. I, I, uh, I like a lot of fight songs. Um, I think Notre Dame's is definitely up there. I think Michigan's is, uh, is really good. And um, – I think Texas A&M's fight song is, is really good and, and uh, might make some people mad by saying this, but I think Texas's fight song is, is one of the best. Uh, the Texas fight is one of the best fight songs. And if I keep going, if, you, if I give you another uh, a few minutes, you'll name five more. Do you want to pick one? Those are the four. I, I, I'll probably give the, the uh, edge to Notre Dame's fight song as the, as the best, but, but uh, it's tough. I like a lot of them. Gina Mizell, 
Hum a few bars of the Arizona State fight song. Oh, man, you're putting me on the spot. Um, I can, well, okay. I'm not, I was going to say I could sing it for you, but I'm not going to do that. Um, Why? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. How did Matt not make Jason's list? <laughs> yeah, I don't know a lot of fight songs, uh, you know, who whose fight songs are what, but from playing uh, my video game where they played in the background the whole time. There you go. Random fight songs. I know a bunch of them. I just don't <laughs> know what all, what schools they correspond to. Gina, who's your favorite? Um, well, Jason mentioned it in his list, but but I think Michigan's is my is my favorite. Just uh, it's just so powerful with the hail to the victors, um, you know, all of that. So um, that's probably my favorite uh, one. But yeah, Notre Dame's obviously got a good one. Um, but yeah, I, I got to give give the edge to uh, to Michigan is the all time best. Jenny, who you got? Um, I think I will go to the West Coast and go with USC. Um, no. the, they have sort of a, I know, I know. I knew Oxygen, Gino was, Oxygen <laughs> for it's, vinegar it's thin myself. <laughs> medic, I, medic to Stillwater, please. I knew Gina was going to love that. No, don't they have like two or three songs that they sort of, Linked together, and it's the you know, dun 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 dun, 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 dun. all the time <laughs> when they're driving, when they're driving it down your throat. Yes, yes, yeah, that's really good like stuff. like a true Pac 10 rival. Sorry, yeah. Gina. No, I do, but I love the trumpets and the brass and all that stuff, and I know uh, that's uh, annoying to a lot of people, but uh, the USC, I don't know if it's uh, I don't even know that I, I really like probably their, their actual fight song is uh is the one I like least. I like the trumpet uh, thing that starts out USC's fight song. The pomp and circumstance that Dan Cody learned to love so much <laughs> in the Orange Bowl that night yeah. in Miami in 2005. Barry, are you going to take mine? What's your favorite? Well, I mean, the bet, it's not a question of favorite. It's, it's, it's not even it's not a, much of a debate. I mean, clearly the best fight song in America is the Naval Academy. Anchors away. I mean, uh, what self-respecting American can't stand up and cheer when the Navy band starts playing "Anchors Away"? But if you want to, uh, if you want to eliminate the uh, the Navies because of uh, uh, because of a military reasons, then you can go to. There's a lot of. I tell you, who's got a good one is Alabama. They got a great fight song, and um, Wisconsin on Wisconsin's great, and Michigan and Notre Dame are fantastic as well. That's probably the big five right there. An underrated one is the University of Maryland. And they, oh, they're so hey, good, oh, they're so good they've got oh, two please. of them. They've got two who's fights right, Who's underrating, who's rating them at all? You're the only person that rates them, and therefore, they're absolutely overrated. I challenge anybody to Google it up. YouTube, Maryland's fight song. You're like, how come this has been hid? This fight song deserves a better football team. I'm telling you, when you listen to it, you will demand a better football team for that fight song. Oh, great day. Anchors Away is way up there. I mean, way, way, way up there. The Air Force Academy, off they go into the wild blue yonder. You can't, it's very, very hard to beat. And I hate to say this, but Maryland's is really good. Barry, last question on OU, Notre Dame. Best game atmosphere you've ever been at for an OU game, and do you think Saturday night could approach it? Oh, it was clearly Texas Tech of 08. There hadn't been anything like that. I would be surprised if it approached that, uh, because uh, that that fan uh, crowd was uh, sort of uh, instigated by Bob Stoops calling them out. He didn't call them out this week, so. Um, but I think it'll be a I think it'll be very good. It'll be right up there with. 2000 Nebraska and some of the Nebraska games of the 80s, but I don't know how it could. I don't know how it could reach 2008 Texas Tech. Thanks, Barry. That's all for this edition of the Football Friday Hangout on News OK Live. But you can stay with the best coverage team anywhere, every day at News OK, and every morning in the Oklahoman. See you guys.